Now, Helen Fosborough has been to Manchester to meet a community who've gone out and have, who've gone one step further even with the help of some friendly property developers and built a brand new pub from scratch. The good old British pub. Traditionally, it's usually at the centre of a community, but across the UK they're sold to be demolished or turned into flats. This is happening more than 80 times a month in the UK. British boozers are under attack. The pub trade no longer seems like a good business prospect. However, I'm about to meet some people who are defying the trend. Despite all the problems in the pub trade, Ben and Joe have just opened a brand new pub in Manchester. But why have they taken the risk? The people in this pub today are a really good example of, of what pubs can do. Pubs bring people from across generations together in, in a space at the same time, which um, you don't always see. We, we like to think of uh, pubs as the original social network. This is not just another pub. This is the pub that Ben, Joe and a small community have built from scratch. And when I say from scratch, I mean everything, right down to the pump handles. I made beer pump handles and a beer tap, which is uh, uh, on there at the moment, and a couple of tiles too, I think. I made one of the baskets, did a day of, uh, day of basket weaving. It was the cask and keg pump handles. So the cask ones we did on a potter's wheel, but then we did wood turning on a lathe. Ben, how do you build a pub? We have no track record for building pubs. We're not architects, we're uh, not master planners, but with the enthusiasm and the help of uh, the people of Manchester, it's become relatively easy. How long did it take you and how many volunteers were involved? We've been doing this for 12 months. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who have um, crossed our path and, and helped us get to where we are now. Why did you fancy getting involved in building a pub? Uh, it was just an opportunity to kind of meet new people and develop new skills, really. I joined up. Um, because I'm interested in beer and interested in having a go at things. Interested in beer, that's a new <laughs> one. <laughs> Annabelle was sitting on the stools you made. How does that feel? It's great. They feel very comfortable. How important do you think a project like this is? I think it's a great idea because it's really pulled us together. It's made me really aware of the pub and the site. Yeah, it feels really nice to kind of uh, know that we've had a hand in it, really. It's been a really nice kind of community project. I think it's that connection with the people that have made it, that um, people have been involved in it since day one. Um, so it's been a, a really creative design process. It's got a little bit of every person that's been involved in it in there. Across Britain, pubs are closing every week and there are a lot of historic boarded up pubs. Why did you decide to do a new build and not renovate one of the old ones? Well, we see a pub as the heart of the community and there's no pub in this community um, and we felt that we wanted to bring everybody together. So if you want your own pub, it really does seem like you can build one yourself. Well, with a little help from your friends. Yeah. Cheers! <laughs> well, what an <laughs> opening nice. night there at the Pilcrow. I mean, what a, what a buzz, what a sense of achievement, I guess, from the local community. But, I mean, do you see that as a, as a realistic model to spread right through Britain? I don't really see it as a realistic model. I mean, it is a fantastic pub. It's beautifully designed. The, the sense of community spirit there, I think it came across. Mm. I mean, everybody who came to the pub oh, had made something from the bar stools to the pump handles. But what sets this apart is it's been built in a central business district of Manchester where developers realised there was, there was no hub. There was nowhere for the business people and for the residents to go. So they put money in and built it up from the ground, which is which is brilliant, mm -hmm. but it's rare because usually money is at the heart of these stories and, and it's money that people haven't got. But yeah, fabulous atmosphere. Yeah. Great pub. And uh, back in May when we spoke to you, there were 27 pubs a week closing down. Is that still the case? That is still... Well, it isn't still the case. There is some good news on that front um, because developers, uh, as we reported back in May, often see Britain's pubs, usually historic ones, mm -hmm. as low-hanging fruit. So they've realised that our planning laws in Britain are quite weak and they can, mm -hmm. they can exploit those. But since we reported on the story in May, that figure's gone down to 21 
pubs closing every week. Often much loved, usually viable and often historic. So that is good news. It's still more than 80 pubs a month. But I think it's happening for a number of reasons. I think many communities are realising that the developers are targeting their local and they've realised that they can fight back. They can apply to councils to apply for an asset of community value status which gives them a layer of protection in, in planning. So they're fighting back. And on the flip side, some councils have also realised that our British planning laws are weak and that we're going to lose our cultural heritage if we don't tighten them up. So some councils are tightening them up of their own volition mm -hmm. because these properties are worth far more to developers as mini supermarkets, bulldozed as supermarket car parks, office space or, or private homes. So uh, looking back at some of the pubs that we featured then, back in May and you know the situation that they were in back then what what's the current situation what's the update well I'll update you on two historic pubs in Kent that we featured the 15th century Checker Inn which is the last proper community pub in the village it's been boarded up and closed for the last 18 months yeah. the developer who's bought it wants to turn it into a private house the community are very keen to keep it so the latest on the Checker is that Dover District Council have said that the community can try and raise the funds to buy the pub themselves now it's doubled in price since the developer bought <laughs> It, but they're trying yeah. and a couple of weeks ago they had a pop-up pub in the village hall and they've raised more than £70,000 so far wow. to the asking price of 340000 Very determined. It's the last proper pub in the village so uh, they're not going to go down without a fight. And uh, just a few miles up the road we reported on the historic Red Lion. Now that's been a pub for 750 years. It's mentioned in the Doomsday Book. It's Grade 2 star listed which puts it in the top 5% of protected buildings across Britain. Again, a developer wants to turn that into two private homes. It's been boarded up for 18 months and closed. The latest from the council is the community were sent off to try and find a serious buyer. They found three, including a household name, and when they went back to the council with those details of the three purchases, the council have now recommended that the pub still be turned into two houses. So You'd this think has with gone a grade planning... two star, it would be well protected. Mm -hmm. Well, it's gone to the planning inspectorate now, so the yeah, uh, community are busy getting their um, appeal in. Thank you, Helen. Now, in 